Hello, welcome. In this video, we are going to talk about Manning's equation. So, we are going to move into channel hydraulics a little bit, and to do that, we need to know what Manning's equation is and how it is used. So, let's briefly discuss what we have done so far from the hydrology part and how that is related to what we are going to do next. So, until now, we looked at rainfall or precipitation processes and how that gets converted into losses through infiltration and evapotranspiration and after subtracting losses from rainfall or precipitation we get surface runoff or overland flow and then we also have some of this infiltrated water going towards the stream in the form of base flow or subsurface flow so that's the hydrology part and then recently or just in the last video we looked at how to estimate this discharge hydrograph by using the unit hydrograph method from from excess rainfall so what we are interested in in learning now is what happens to the water that is flowing on the surface into the stream so how deep this water is on the surface and also what happens to it when it enters into the main channel we are going to focus mainly into the main channel and the Manning's equation how it is used in the main channel but Manning's equation can also be used to find the depth of overland flow but that's not the focus of what we will be discussing in the next few classes so the question that we are interested in is what happens to water after it enters the channel the river channel so by that what I mean is how deep the flow is and what is its velocity okay so again from the civil engineering point of view we are interested in design so let's say if you are designing a bridge or a culvert then you need to know how high that bridge should be and to do that you need to know for your design flow how deep this water is going to be and how fast it is going to move so you can design this bridge so i'm just drawing the bridge piers here and that's your road deck okay so again from the hydraulic design point of view we need to know how much water will be moving through that channel for a design discharge so in most hydraulic design if this is our hydrograph we take this Q peak and we see what impact this Q peak will have on the hydraulics uh, of this river channel so to do that one of the equations that we use is Manning's equation and that's what we are going to see today so before we get into Manning's equation I'm showing you a few things here so let me just divide this slide into two parts on the left hand side here what I'm showing you here is watershed so this is our boundary and then the water is flowing from the surface into the channel that you see here in the middle so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to zoom in to this part of the river and on the right hand side what you see is the plan view of that river then what I have done here is let's say we have a discharge Q flowing through that channel and I'm just showing you the flow direction here and then I have taken two cross sections of that plan view so the first section that I have taken is A, A which is across the flow and we usually call that as a river cross section or a stream cross section so this is our cross section AA and there are two properties here so one is the hydraulic depth 
y and then the top width of the flow and then we can also think of the profile view which I'm showing you here. So profile view is this section BB that I have taken here on the on the plan view. So in the profile view I am again showing you the channel depth Y. I am also showing you the velocity. So that's the the one of the properties that we are interested in. So we are interested in finding Y which is how deep the water is. We are also interested in finding velocity to know how fast that water is moving. So we have plan view, we have cross-sectional view and we have profile view. So when we are going to discuss um, Manning's equation and eventually when we do Hecras modeling uh, these terms will come handy when we look at cross-section and profile. Another thing that I'm showing you on this slide is also the slope. So that's the triangle here. So I'm showing you the bed slope. So the bed slope is basically dy by dx. So the vertical height divided by the horizontal distance. Okay, so that's the channel bed slope. So Yes, so let's move to the next slide. So one of the properties that we use in hydraulic design and especially in Manning's equation is this hydraulic radius. And some of you who have taken an open channel class or hydraulics, you may have come across this term. So what I'm showing you again, I will just divide this into two parts. On the left hand side, I'm showing you a prismatic or a rectangular channel. So Y is again the water depth. And on the right hand side, I'm showing you what most of the times will be a natural shape of a river channel. And in this, so this is the Y I'm saying. And then I'm also showing you P, which is the weighted perimeter, okay? So weighted perimeter, again, it's the perimeter, but we are focusing on how how deep the water is here and then you calculate the perimeter taking into account how deep the water is so in the prismatic channel so this is our weighted perimeter i'm just redrawing it again in red and in the natural cross-sectional shape here so this is our weighted perimeter okay and then cross-sectional area so in case of rectangular cross-section on the left hand side if the bottom width of this channel is B then the cross-sectional area this cross-sectional area is not the cross-sectional area of the entire cross-section it is of the cross-sectional flow okay so you don't take the whole depth into account you just take into account the depth of the water in the channel so it is easy to find the cross-sectional area for a rectangular channel for a channel shape that you see on the right side it is a little bit complicated but it should not be for us because we have done this before so similar to what we did for calculating the area of the hydrograph what we can do is we can divide this cross section into triangle and trapezoid and then you just so this is a1 a2 a3 a4 and so on let's say this is a n so the area of this cross section on the right side is the summation of all the areas okay so some of these areas especially at the edge they are triangles but then all the other areas are trapezoid so you know how to get the area for triangle and trapezoid so you calculate those areas and you add them up and you get the area of that cross section so hydraulic radius then is the cross sectional area of the flow divided by the weighted perimeter of the flow okay so a divided by p will give you hydraulic radius so that's something we need to know when we are using Manning's equation the last thing I want to talk about is that when the water is flowing through the channel so we have conservation of mass we have conservation of energy and we have conservation of momentum so there are lots of forces acting so in the case of Manning's equation and what I'm presenting you here is a very simplistic view of how I 
interpreted for a beginner. So we have the gravitational force, okay, uh, that is driving the flow in this direction. And then the channel shape and what you have on the channel bed is going to offer flow resistance. So this force is opposing this the flow. And then the hydraulic properties such as Y and velocity, so depth and velocity. So the depth of that flow and the velocity of the flow is dictated by the balance of these two primary forces. Uh, and again, as I said, I'm presenting a very simplistic view. There are lots of other forces such as acceleration and momentum and all that. So for now, just think of this in a very simple way. So we have gravity that is driving the flow. And then we have the channel properties such as roughness and cross-sectional shape that are offering some resistance to that flow and those two forces need to be balanced and that will dictate these two hydraulic properties which is depth and velocity which is what we are interested in. So finally then this is what the Manning's equation is. Okay so Manning's equation says velocity of that flow is equal to C over N C is the conversion factor, which is 1 for SI units and which is 1.486 for English units. In some textbooks, you may just see 1.49 instead of 1.486. So N is called the Manning surface parameter. So this, as I mentioned, it will, it will, it will tell us the something about how rough or smooth the channel is. So for a very smooth channel, N is a small value. And for a, as the smoothness decreases, the N value becomes higher. And we'll talk more about that when we do some examples using Manning's equation and also Hecras modeling. So R is the hydraulic radius that we know. So R is equal to A over P. And S is the frictional slope or the slope of the energy grade line. So I am assuming that you have heard of energy grade line if you did a hydraulic course. And when we assume a uniform flow, this S can also be the slope of the channel bed that I showed you previously. So if this is the bed of the channel, so the slope dy over dx will be this S. So this expression gives us a um, velocity and this equation is called Manning's equation. And in the previous slide, I spoke about two forces. One is the gravitational force, so that's the slope. So this slope that you see in this equation, that is the energy gradient driving the flow. And then we have R and N. So R is saying something about the cross-sectional shape and N is the roughness of the channel. So you can see one part of this equation include the channel properties, the other part of the equation uses the, or includes the energy gradient. And this is the expression that we have for Manning's equation. And then if you know that velocity, you can find out the discharge. So in this case, we know what the discharge is. We need to know what the velocity is and we can find that velocity by using this expression but to use this expression you need to know what the hydraulic radius is and to know what the hydraulic radius is you need to know what the channel depth is which is also uh, unknown and we'll talk more about this when we do HECRAS and talk a little bit about hydraulic modeling so for now all I want you to remember or know is this expression for Manning's. Okay, so I hope you were able to follow and you know what Manning's equation is and what are some of the terms used in Manning's equation. Next, we will do a small assignment on how to get the area, get the R hydraulic radius and how to get the channel roughness value 
and then we will move on to HECRAS hydraulic modeling. So with that, I will stop here and if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Thank you and bye.